While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. Pastry life, carb life, pastry life, carb life, pastry life, carb life, pastry life, carb life, pastry life, carb Oh, I got a package. I wonder what it is. It's... Butterflies? Oh, boy. I don't even want to know what Amanda was planning on doing with these. You ordered butterflies? Alright! You can order dead butterflies on mine? Wait, so these aren't yours? Hmm. Uh, no, but I'm definitely ordering some right now. Um, okay. Love you. Is it Damien? I should bring the box to Damien, right? Is that going to constitute a second date? Or should I give it to Amanda? Oh, I'll give it back to Damien. I should take it over to him. That's stealing. If I gave it to Amanda, that would be stealing you all. That's not good. I jog over to Damien's house and box up. Pull his back his door knocker and suddenly the door opens. Ah. Oh, Mr. Silk. To what do I owe the pleasure? Whoa, how did you know I was about to knock? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, anyways. I think this got delivered to my house by mistake. <laughs> I hand him the box and his face lights up. Oh. What a wonderful surprise. I was just about to send a strongly worded letter to the courier service about this. Many thanks. I... Uh, not to pry, but what are you going to do with those butterflies? <laughs> <laughs> How can you, uh, hmm. It's simple. Here, let me show you. Ah. These aren't ready quite yet. They'll need to be rehydrated overnight so they're easy to work with. I have some over here that are ready to pin. Damien takes a seat at his desk while I hover behind him. He picks up a little triangular piece, a little triangular paper package, and snips off the edges. He pulls out an all black butterfly and shows it to me. Ah. I'm rather excited about this one. It's a turquoise swallow tape. He gently opens the wing, spreading the butterflies out on the table. The backs of the wings are a gorgeous, iridescent green color. Uh. Oh, and the pigment on this one is nice, too. Anyway, pinning a butterfly is actually very simple. It just requires a delicate touch. First, I'll put a pin through the thorax. Damien slides a pin through the middle of the butterfly and places the butterfly on a piece of styrofoam. Steps and begins placing paper and more pins on and around it. He does this so effortlessly, it's almost hypnotic. Oh. I have a frame here that I think this one will look quite pretty in, but I'll need to let it sit for a couple of days until it's ready. And then what? Uh -huh. I remove all the pins and put it on display with the others. I take a close look at Damien's collection. One with bright blue wings keeps drawing my eye. This one's so pretty. <laughs> David takes off the wall. Mm. Oh, yes. That's a blue morpho. He hands the small frame to me. Uh. Here, I think this would look lovely in your home. Oh, I couldn't take this. Mm. I insist, believe me, I have more than enough. Thank you. Mm. If you have ever an interest in pinning some insects yourself, you, you know where to find me. Ha <laughs> ha. I think I'll I think I'll leave that up to you. But I feel like I'd probably break them in half with my butter fingers. I would say sausage fingers more than butter fingers because it's not like I don't. I feel like a yeah, anyways personal thing. <laughs> Nonsense! You have beautiful, steady hands. You would make a fine taxidermist. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Am I blushing? I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm, Amanda. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. <laughs> HIA? Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Hmm. Fire, please. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. Huh. And... This is, this is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Hmm. Oh, honey, it's All okay right. if you didn't- I GOT IT IN! Oh! 
I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in! Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is mm -hmm. incredible. Wait, Dad. Uh -huh. I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. Uh, it'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Mm. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Hey. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. Mm. Wherever? You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. The cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with the view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID, and Amanda, slow down, you're gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. And I mentioned that students get their own studio space once they're seniors, and we all get the professional photo editing software for free. She's so excited. Uh, I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know that I had that talk with Mr. Vega? Mm -hmm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? N no. I don't want to put a dumpster fire on the... I don't want to... I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but... I need you to knock it out of the park with these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try hard. Hi. <laughs> Happy morning to you. <laughs> We're just trying, I'm just trying to have a chill time with my bro Craig. Yeah. Um, today's supposed to be like a, over a hundred again. Like, literally, I don't know if anyone else has had this, but literally all of my friends on like, Social media have been putting up like, oh, it's finally getting cold. Like, oh, nature is healing. Like, and I'm just like, what do you mean it's so hot? <laughs> My children are having a tea party and they wanted to invite Amanda, but we can't find her on here. You're also invited. Why would Amanda be on dad book? I mean, she obviously is on dad book because she has the dad Manda profile over here. But like, <laughs> I don't, like... I just don't... <laughs> Where's your daughter on dad book? <laughs> Amanda's, Amanda's, Amanda's helping her, her papa find a nice, nice man. Dads do love coffee. This, this, uh, your silk daddy loves coffee. Are you ready for the thing we're gonna do today? The thing you promised me do? <laughs> Honey, I already told you that I'm not gonna throw away my Tom Clancy novels. <laughs> the tea party, Dad. Craig's kids, that hand-drawn invitation. Aww. Amanda walks over to the refrigerator and comes back with a hand-drawn invitation on a sheet of computer paper, inviting Amanda and Amanda's dad to a tea party. They spelled cordially wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say. Earlio, that's what... He's such a lawyer. I don't... Like, I feel like maybe it's just because I, I know lawyers and I have lawyers in my family. <laughs> But it just seems like such a, like, that's the choice that you're going to make to say about this children's invitation early on. <laughs> Come on. Just put some going outside pants and let's get going. I can go outside in sweatpants. Nothing's stopping me. Huh. <laughs> Dad, just, uh, I'll see you in a minute. Fuck authority! We all wear the same outfits all the time. What did I say about the pants? I'm a rebel, sweetie. Oh gosh, new voices. Oh, twins. <laughs> okay. Hello, thank you for coming to our tea party. I do my best to bow and present my daughter, who thanks them with a curtsy. This way, please. Briar and Hazel lead us to a small table with tiny chairs. Some are occupied by stuffed animals, and Matt, his daughter Carmencita, are here too. Matt raises a comically small plastic teacup at me. <laughs> hey, dude. How's the tea? The imaginary tea is wonderful. I taste a hint of lemongrass. Hello, Carmencita. Hello, mister. Amanda's dad. Did you just wake up? Uh, no. Why? Those are inside pants. <laughs> Please, have a seat. I sit down between Amanda and Matt. Mm. I don't think I'm going to be able to get out of this chair. Craig is always wearing sweatpants. But I will say, Carmencita 
is the daughter of Matt, and Matt is obviously pretty stylish, so she's probably used to her dad, like, you know, being, being, you know, cool looking. Looking, looking cool, if you will. I would wear sweatpants all the time, if I could. Hi, everyone! <laughs> I turned to see Daisy and Brian enter into the backyard and take a seat next to us. Sorry we're late. Daisy made me put on my going outside pants. See? <laughs> Thank you all for taking your time out of your busy schedules for some high tea. Actually, it's a common misconception that high tea was appreciated by nobles. <laughs> Dad, shut up! <laughs> oh, man. Earlio. Earlio trying to, trying to flex some of that knowledge he just picked up from, from Goth Dad. Now, if y'all put on your designated tiaras. Ah. There are little tiaras sitting on everyone's plates. Well, except for Brian's. His is a <laughs> softball helmet. Oh, we ran out of tiaras. Uh, I don't think this is going to fit me, but I appreciate the thought. Dad, you're the royalty. Please act like odd. Brian tries to balance the ill-fitting softball helmet on top of his head, but it immediately tumbles off and into the bushes. Dad, is the tea ready? Uh, uh... Uh, yeah, it's been, uh, steeping for a while now. Awesome. Would you girls like to serve your guests tea? No, thank you. We'd much appreciate our servant's help. <laughs> Craig leans over to me. Mm. That's me. <laughs> Craig places teacups in front of all of us and a single sandwich cookie onto each of our plates. He pours some tea into my cup. Hmm. Awfully fluorescent for tea. I clink my teacup with Matt's and take a sip. Good lemonade. It's tea. <laughs> Why didn't they just make Arnie Palmies? Arnie Palmy alert. Arnie Palmy alert. I. I. Love Arnold Palmers. Right. Very good tea. I lean over to Amanda, who's happily enjoying her tea. So, what do we do at tea parties? Huh? We enjoy the splendors of upper class society, father. <laughs> she takes a dainty bite out of her sandwich cookie. Marvelous. <laughs> so, the meeting of the princesses has been called to order. Here, here. I'm a warrior princess. I hunt and stuff, and I like, I have like a really cool sword. Can I be a space princess? I'll allow it. And I'll be a rock star princess. I haven't nailed down a Daisy voice yet. I, and I'll be a, and I'll be a rock star princess. An all male, an all male. Okay, I think I think that's better. An all male rock star princess. I'm also a space princess. Could there be more than one? Space is pretty big, don't you think? I changed my mind. I want to be a space princess too. Dad, what are you? Do I get to be a princess? Duh. Well, huh, I guess that makes me. History Channel Princess, Hacker Princess, Rude Boy Princess. Oh, I gotta go with Rude, Rude Boy Princess. <laughs> give it up, give it up, give it up. If I drop my crown on the floor, I'll make sure to pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry. I, I listen to a lot of ska. I'm not ashamed of it. I think I'll be landscaper and general contracting princess. They grow up so fast. It was like yesterday that I was helping a man throw her own tea parties. Uh -huh. It's really nice the girls are getting along. Yeah, I'm really glad we moved into this community. Hey. Me too. Man has been kind of a role model to them, you know. I hadn't even realized. And I don't even know if Amanda does either. But I guess they're right. All the girls in the neighborhood look up to her. She seems to go out of her way to play with them. I'm so proud of her. You better not proud Dad cry at this tea party early oh! Hmm. I'm tired. Dude, same. Playing with a bunch of little kids while simultaneously want your attention and approval is surprisingly exhausting. Hmm. But in a good way. But also kind of in a scary way. How so? Huh. I feel like I gotta be on my best behavior for them. I don't wanna let them down. Is it because you still feel bad about dropping the F-bomb in front of your cousin that one time? Ah. I corrupted her dad. She secondhand smokes now. Well, these those kids really look up to you. I'm glad they have you as a role model. Hmm. Shucks, Pops. I ruffle Amanda's hair. Okay. 
Let's go. Let's go have a date with Matt, because Matt's one of my favorites. I navigate to Matt's dad book page and type out a message. Hey, Matt. Great getting to see you at the barbecue. We should definitely hang out soon. Wait, we were just at a tea party. We're talking about the barbecue and not the tea party? Earlio, are you trying to be an asshole? Hey, remember that? Not that time that we literally just hang out, but like the time way before. <laughs> That's what I remember you from, Matt. I'm actually catching a show tonight at the Sound Garden. Want to come? What's in the Sound Garden? It's a concert venue, but also a band that a lot of people listened to back when it was cool to have soul patches. Oh man, I haven't been to a real concert since the man that was born. Am I ready for this? And another message pops up on the screen. Pup is playing tonight. Okay, Pup is one of my favorite Canadian bands, uh, punk bands, to have come out in like the last like five to ten years. Oh, this is—is is this just gonna turn into a big uh, Pup Pup advertisement? This is Pup's first album. It's really incredible. Um, if you're into if you're into punk or if you like any kind of hard hardish music. They are wonderful examples of really interesting melodic pop punk that is musically interesting as well as lyrically interesting and sort of raw and ripping and good times, uh, angry and celebratory. I log off dad book and think for a second. Wait, when was the last time I went to a concert? What do you even do at concerts now? Hey, you made it. Ready for tonight? You better believe it, fellow live music lover. Grab those ticks and let's mash that new... What? New? Short for venue? You know, where you go to see dope certs. Are you just making this stuff up right now? Man, I gotta admit, I haven't been to a real concert since pet rocks were cool. I have no idea what I'm in for. I got to take you to your first concert in a long time? This is gonna be awesome! Just hang with me, Earlio. You're gonna be good. Quick question. Hey. Shoot. What is... Scene. <laughs> scene can describe a music scene as it pertains to a community of people who like the same genre, but can also describe a genre of music no one wants to admit they were into. <laughs> True. That's confusing. You'll get it. The most important thing is that you enjoy yourself. Come on, let's head to the show. Going to shows and, and watching punk shows is kind of a thing that I love doing and have been love doing. Um, for a long time. And so it's like, I'm pretty sure that this current string of, of pandemic is, has been the longest time I've ever gone without going to a punk show or going to any sort of show, which is a little like, oh, it's just, I don't know, it feels weird. And now, but now like thinking about it, like, oh my God, I feel like if I walked into a venue today, like I'd just start weeping. Like I'd just be like, oh my God, all of these things. <laughs> Remember when we could gather? Matt, you made it! Huh? A youngster kid runs up and high-fives Matt. The kid runs off and Matt turns to me, shuddering. Oh, I get nervous when people surprise high-five me. Me too. Hey. I'm like a small animal. Loud noises in large groups of people frighten me. <laughs> Do you also enjoy curling up in a patch of sunlight to take a nap? Oh. That's my favorite thing to do. A couple other people notice that Matt's in the crowd and yell hey as well. Matt waves and hugs a couple people. He seems really in his element here. Matt turns his attention back to me. That's right. Eyes on this, buddy. <laughs> I'm so afraid of all these people. Oh, it's times like these when I realize that I can only be charming and funny for about five minutes before I run out of stuff to talk about, and then I become keenly aware of my hands are, and that there's no comfortable place in your mouth for your tongue to rest. <laughs> God damn it, where do I put my tongue? <laughs> so you go to concerts a lot. Oh yeah, it's, it's one of my absolute favorite things in the world. I think it's one thing to listen to music and connect with it, but when you're in a room full of people connecting with the music just, in just the same way that you are, that's magic. I suddenly have the urge to pee. Curse this tiny dad bladder. I've never heard it put that way. That's really beautiful. Also, I have to pee. Yeah, sounds great. Hurry up, man. They're about to go on. This is rookie mistake, Earlio. This is, you don't do this. All you have to do is start sweating because the 
the the band is gonna get crazy and it'll offset your P requirements so that you don't lose your place in I don't think I've ever been so disappointed in my own character. <laughs> I'm usually the wedge friend. Uh, that's the that's the phrase that I use for it. Um, I am. I often get used as the wedge friend because I am a large person, <laughs> and so when I'm going forward, all of my small friends uh, tuck in behind me, and we create a we create a, a sort of current that I I I make a, a big opening. At the at at the front, um, <laughs> I, I do I do a I do a wedge. I make I make myself a wedge. As soon as I finish my business, the band starts. The people that were initially milling around the venue all crowd up against the stage as Pop plays their first song. How am I ever gonna find Matt now? Mini game time. Avoid the youths. We gotta avoid the youths. Go. Oh, they've changed. So I believe that the song that is playing right now, uh, yeah. So the music, this is not the music that should be playing. Uh, it should be, it should be uh, a pop song. This is not pop at all. Uh, it's because we are in technically, I'm in stream safe mode, because technically, because of the rights and licensing issues, I, if I played the pop song, I would be breaching a thing, and I would probably get a copyright strike. And we don't want copyright strikes because don't if I have three of them, I get banned from Twitch forever. But basically, the song is going. She says I need to grow up. The music video for the song that actually is playing is really fantastic. It is done completely in an eight-bit style. Um, and it's a 16-bit, 8-bit style, and it's really, really fun, really funny. My sister thinks that I'm a creep. Oh my gosh, I wish it was Pup, though. The song goes to the rhythm of this, which is... Yeah. I survived the crowd! Yes! Is this the front? I guess this is the front. S plus, I am a pop punk. I guess I should do it. I'm bumped into be I'm bumped into from behind and I find myself in the middle of a bunch of youths running around in a circle to the music. I'm in the pit now. How do I get out of the pit? This is it! This is how I die! Trampled under the boots of counterculture! God, what an honor. What a privilege. Someone grabs my hand. Someone familiar. I look up and see Matt. He pulls me back up onto my feet. You're wild, dude. Yeah, we got them eggplants. Eggplant. <laughs> Matt throws his arms around me, and we jump back into the circle, bashing into youths left and right as Pup plays a killer solo. I didn't know you messed with the pit. Hey. Me neither. Maybe I only got enough pit energy for one song. <laughs> All right, man, let's retreat. We'll show these kids how it's done another day. With the concert over, the crowd starts making their way to the exit. Hey. Hey, I'll meet you outside. Gotta say bye to a couple people. Hey man, thanks for waiting. I got you a present. Matt hands me the t-shirt I was looking at earlier. <gasps> oh, thanks, man. I saw you eyeballing it back at the merch booth. Hey, uh, and I mean, anyone who tears it up that hard on the first time back at a concert deserves a reward. Finally, I'll be able to infiltrate their ranks and defeat them not only on the field of battle as we have done today, but on a grander scale. <laughs> hey. We'll see you in the world pit, youths. Hey, Matt. Oh. Hey, it's Pop. Oh, it's Pop. Look at them. They're so lovely. Hey, dude. I didn't realize you were here. Hey. I'm so glad I could make it. You guys put on a great show. Thanks. Oh. Well, see you around. <laughs> oh. Wait. You know Pop? Hey. Oh yeah, met him a couple times when they first started touring. Kids. Hey. Whoa. Come on, let's grab some diner food. Matt and I walk into a tiny, tiny little diner with cute neon sign. We tear into some bacon and eggs in the corner. Yeah, sounds great. So there I am in the pit trying to explain to the face tattoo guy that I didn't mean to elbow him with a face tattoo, but he's already seeing red. He's lumbering toward me and there's nowhere to go. Hey, yeah. It's the end for me, right? Then out of nowhere I get this idea. I just lean back and 
spread my arms. And just like that, I'm crowd surfing away from him in slow motion. You should have seen the look on his face. I bought him a beer afterwards and we were cool. We still follow each other on social media. He has beautiful kid. <laughs> That's so funny. That is so funny. Glad you guys worked it out. Hey. Yeah, man. Just goes to show you that Punk's not dead. Just drives a minivan and has to hire a babysitter. That is so fucking true, though. Like, whoa. Oh, man. I feel that. A lot of my friends who were uh, the most uh, rollicking punk people that I know, a lot of them have babies now and are like, you were still punk rock. And I'm like, yeah, you are still punk rock, but now you're you're bringing up punk rock babies, which I think is really important. Oh, I used to tour in a band. We were small, but got us to travel all around the States. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we were poor, and we had to scrape a lot together just to survive, but I would trade those, trade those experiences for everything. Yeah. But yeah, that's how I knew a bunch of those people at the show. Music like this builds an amazing community, especially in a town like this. Just a lot of positive energy and good vibes. I think that's super true. I think, especially with like punk and metal, uh, hardcore alternative communities, people sort of have this uh, perception that, I don't know, they're violent or angry or they're all, you know, ah, they've got something to complain. They're, you know, they've got a chip on their shoulder or ah, like, but to be completely honest, I, I think I've never been, I've never felt more accepted or like, you know, welcome than at punk, punk shows and meeting people and, and yeah. The eighties did a number, you know, the eighties and nineties did a number on, on sort of what it was to make, I guess, alternative music because, or, or even be sort of counterculture or may, not mainstream. Um, and so, yeah, there's just a lot of sort of misconstrued perceptions about how people would see you or exist or all these things. But anyways, if you can go to a punk show, they're great. <laughs> How's Carmen Cita? She says she wants to learn the drums. <laughs> oh boy. Hey. It'll be loud and I'll need to take a lot of aspirin, but I'll manage. Can't really blame her. I'm suddenly very grateful that all my daughter's hobbies are super quiet. Photography, collaging, whatever it is she does on the internet. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> I'm trying to be supportive of Carmen Cita's rebellious. Oh, I, I, oops, I pressed the button too quickly. I think it would be a good daddy-daughter activity to find something to rebel against together. Hey. Like what? F fashion. Consumerism. Big budget remakes of foreign films. Actually, big budget remakes of foreign films legitimately frustrate the shit out of me. Reading subtitles isn't even that hard. I think we just have to strive as a society to be okay with reading subtitles. <laughs> we keep digging into our big plates of greasy diner food. The breakfast I ordered for dinner is absolutely hitting the spot. Oh my god, oh. Brinner! <gasps> Brinner! I dream of one day, if I ever open a diner, that I want to have a section called Yule Brinner, like the actor, but it's all going to be breakfast for dinner items. I think Brinner is a wonderful, wonderful thing to do, because who says, who says that we have to adhere to the tyranny of sunlight in order to have a nice eggs and bacon hmm? or pancakes or waffles hmm? hmm who says sunlight is required not i not i breakfast foods whenever why can't we call them all time foods hmm they are the most important foods but they are all time foods <laughs> yes vote for me and i'll make breakfast 24/7 Every hour of the day you can breakfast. Yes. Vote for Earl. <laughs> Being a single dad is rough sometimes. It's a lonely feeling. I understand that all too well. I mean, at least we have the rest of the dads to talk to. Oh. Yeah. I just... I don't know. Hmm. I get really nervous sometimes talking to people. Matt gets nervous talking to people, but he's so cool. Me too. I never really considered myself an extrovert and never really considered myself an introvert, but I'm uncomfortable in every situation anyway. Ah, you're fine. You're actually really easy to talk to, you know that? We walk back to the cul-de-sac. Back to our respective houses. Tonight was a blast, man. Loved it. 
Although I'm probably gonna feel it in my knees in the morning. Ha! <laughs> you and me both. I, uh, don't usually like going to these things alone. It was really cool to have you there with me. I'm glad. Hey. Alright, I'm calling it quits for the night. Stay cool, man. He called me cool. Hey, Pops, how's the show? Matt thinks I'm cool! Huh? <laughs> you don't say. Man to Panda, Matt thinks I'm cool. <laughs> blind leading the blind, huh? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just got dunked on by my own child. Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, Matt, remind me which one of us just tore it up in the pit, the punk show, and which one of us just spent four hours probably watching Tiny House Hunting again? Uh, Tiny House... Tiny House Hunting Amish Triplets Extreme Edition? First of all, how dare you? That show is a classic. Second of all, you moshed in the pit? Who even are you? I am your extremely cool dad. Alright, I'm hitting the hay pops. I'll see you in the pit. Night, kiddo. Hey, hey, hey. Let's open this pit up! Life, 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 life